Okay, so Framer Motion is a very popular animation library for React. It's used in a ton of stuff. It's something I often use in my projects because it saves a ton of time um, and it's way easier and much more intuitive than writing all of your animations in just CSS. So yeah, because since you're using React, you already need JavaScript on the client, so there's no reason not to use it really unless you're that worried about performance but if I go over here I'm just on their website I'll leave a link to this down below um, I just made this really basic react app that I'm running on localhost and it's just a square a circle and a triangle and we're gonna make these objects do different things and react to different events that come from us so let's go get started on that so I'm going to jump over to my IDE here. You can see the basic app.js. And I'm using Tailwind for this. If you um, clone this repo, you can just run npm install and you'll be totally ready to go. So if you're not going to use this, you need to just run the command um, npm iframer motion, just like that. That's all you got to do first should do is let's go over to our square so that's our blue square right here and let's make this square do some cool little animations so I'm gonna do import motion and I can see it right here from frame motion just like that and what we have to do to be able to give this div that is my square it's just a square with a fixed width and height a blue background and rounded corners that's all that's going on here with this tailwind if you're unfamiliar um, to get started we just have to do motion dot div you can do dot image dot h1 dot h2 pretty much any DOM element will work um, so motion dot div and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it an animate property and that is going to be of I'm just going to give it an X of 200 like that. And what you're going to see happens if we refresh the page is you're going to see this quickly animates across the page. Um, so that's that's all fun, but that's not really that interesting. Let's try something like a rotate of, let's give it 90 degrees. So when I do that, you'll see that it rotates 90 degrees and is translated 200 pixels to the right on the screen. That's pretty cool. So now that we have that, we can also give it an initial state. So what if we want it to start somewhere else? We can do initial and give it the exact same kind of object. So I'm going to do x minus 200. So it will start 200 pixels to the left. And I'm going to do rotate. I'll do just zero and let's save that and then when we refresh that you can see that this does a 90 degree rotation whenever we refresh but maybe this is something you want to have happen when it's in view maybe if I went down here and I scrolled back up you'd want it to do it again for example well that's super easy with, with frame remotion I'm just gonna remove this animate and I'm going to change this to while in view. If you see here, we have a few different little events, while drag, while focus, while hover, while in view, and while tap. I'm going to use while in view for now. We'll talk about the other ones in a couple minutes. I'm going to save that, and if we refresh, it looks exactly the same, but if I scroll down, have that square to view, and we go back up, you'll see it does it over and over again. It's pretty cool. So now let's move over to our circle. I think we've talked enough about our square. So. We have our red circle here and let's first import motion we always need motion we're gonna need that save that I'm gonna go down to the div here and I'm gonna do motion dot div and motion dot div once again save that so now I'm gonna give this a prop of drag and you can probably guess what that's gonna do so I'm saving that and now I'm back in my browser and you can see that I can drag this around wherever I want. However, one of the problems is, as nice as this is, it has acceler acceleration and velocity. Um, if I can just do something like this and now our circle's gone, 
So we don't want that. So, but what we can do is we can give it drag constraints. That's they're called. So drag constraints, and I'm going to do left, and I'm going to do minus 400, and then I'll do right of 400. Let's save that, and I'm going to refresh the page so we get our so circle back. And now you'll see that I can't throw it off the left or the right side. I can still throw it up because I didn't give any top or bottom parameters, but I think you get the point. Um, let's also try some other events that we haven't talked about yet. So I'm going to do on while tap. And while we're tapping, we can use something called scale. And this just scales down the, um, the entire object. I'm going to scale it down when we tap. So I'm going to do it down to 0.9. So save that. I'm going to refresh it. So as I as I click, and I'm holding it down here, clicking a bunch, you can see that it shrinks down. Um, we also can do um, let's do while hover, and this is kind of similar to a button effect you'll see on a lot of different sites. Is I'm going to make the scale bigger while we hover and I'm gonna make it shrink while you click so I'm hovering I'm hovering and then when I click you see it shrink down and we can still drag it around and we still have our drag constraints as you see I can't drag it off the page we also can do things such as while well, focus so that might be helpful for your form events you can do while drag however we kind of already achieving that with uh, our while hover. In our case, it's pretty much doing the same thing. So let's not worry about that too much. What if with our square, for example, as you see here, as I refresh the page, you can see that this animation is happening pretty quick. What if we want to speed it up or slow it down? That's something we didn't talk about. So there is another property called transition within Framer. And what we can do here is I can go duration and I can specify duration in seconds. So I'm going to give it th three seconds. So when I refresh that now, you'll see that this takes longer. Um, the transition property is quite helpful for pretty much anything you're going to do. Um, and you can specify things as other types, damping, a delay, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to leave some documentation of that below because explaining things such as damping is a little bit uh, above the scope of this tutorial. But we haven't talked about our triangle at all. So let's go to our triangle and let's now make it so that we can do some other things with what are called variants. So once again, I'm going to import motion from Framer, motion. Save that, and I'm going to go motion.div. Again, you've seen this twice before already. You've also seen me make that uh, same typo in my ID three times. Um, and what I'm going to do here is you can see that right now, if we go back over here, you can see that we just have the screen triangle. It doesn't do anything. Kind of boring. And again, I just made it with some Tailwind classes. Um, what I'm going to do is on my other monitor, I have a variable I called variance. Save that so that my IDE uh, fixes that up. And what this does is I have a a uh, object with a another object inside of it that has a rotate um, a property of rotate and scale. You've already seen these two properties, and then purple. What I can do here on our triangle is I can go variance and I can pass in that variance object. And if I save that and go over here, you're not gonna notice any difference yet. And that's to be expected. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it so that if we click the triangle, it's gonna go purple, it's gonna rotate 180 degrees, and it's gonna get scaled up a little bit. It's gonna get bigger in size. So I'm going to create a variable 
it's going to be a stateful variable in React. And I'm going to call it toggle and set toggle. And I'm going to set the equal to use state. And this will be a Boolean that is false. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn our class name into a template string. So I'm going to do this and this. And I am now going to go and where's that line? Border green 500. Yep. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do this so that I can make this a make this change when I change the toggle variable. So I'm going to do toggle. So if true will have that and if false we'll have it as a usual green. So I'm going to do a border be purple 500. This is just another tailwind class that will change the color. And I'm going to go into our div. I'm going to give this an on click event. And I'm going to then do a anonymous function. And I'm going to set toggle to the opposite of what it is. Now and then I'm going to go animate. Remember this property that we used before. And I'm going to do if toggle. It's going to be the string of purple and green. So let's save that. And let me just quickly explain what's going on here. Let me make this a little bit easier for everyone to read. So what we're doing here is we're giving this uh, motion object or component a um, variance and this is an object that we have here so we have a green variant and a purple variant and then what we're doing is we're we made this a we made a um, stateful variable for this boolean operator as you can see right here and we are setting that to toggle whenever we click our triangle. And then what we do is we're saying right here, if toggle is true, then we're giving it a string of purple. And if it's false, we're giving it a string of green. So for our animate property. So if you have variance, your animate property is going to look for a string like this. So to give it the name, so we need to make sure that these match up. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to go back to our browser here and let's click this and see what happens. So exactly as expected, we see it scale up a bit and we see the triangle rotate 180 degrees as well as we are toggling our color class right here um, using our template string. So yeah, if you see here, everything that we went over, we let's just do a quick recap with our square. We did some basic animations with translating it uh, across the X axis and rotating it 90 degrees, as well as giving it a transition property that allows us to specify the duration. Um, if we go to our circle, we tried some different events. So we have our drag event that or we have the drag property, I mean, and that allows us to drag this around as well as some drag constraints. Then we also added some other events we hadn't seen before, such as while tap and while hover, because we already went over while in view um, before. And this just allows us to have the effect of hovering, it gets bigger, and while we tap, it's smaller. So that's all for that. And then with our triangle, we went over some variants. So we have a green and purple variant for our triangle that flips it. And this is just a kind of a cleaner way of um, organizing your code so that 
If you have a whole bunch of different button states, for example, this might save you a lot of time. So there's a whole ton of other stuff to go over with frame or motion, such as exit animations and animating SVGs. However, for the basics and for 90% of people, I think that this is kind of all you're gonna need to get started doing some easier animations than you would with CSS. So yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. There again, there will be a branch called init on the Git repository for this that you can clone and you can code along with it, or there will be one called finished that will have it in the current state as you can see here. So I hope you found this video helpful and have a great day.